What inspired you to write the script for Speechless? I'm one of those writers that likes to challenge themselves, so I ended up wanting to write about a man from the man point of view, because mm -hmm. that would be a little different than what I'm used to. And I ended up going online, and I saw a forum for like survivors of sexual assault, and I was like, you know, I'm going to take a look at this, because it was under masculinity issues. Mm -hmm. And there was a category for um, survivors of who had male perpetrators, mm -hmm. and I... I found myself stunned. I was like, wait, what? Like, that doesn't happen, but mm -hmm. it does happen. So I went and read the stories, and I was horrified. Not just because of what it was saying, but because I realized, wow, no one knows about these kind of things. And people have such a prejudice about what sexual violence really means. And that's not fair to these survivors who are just as strong as a woman who would have survived it. So I decided I would do my best to portray that in, in a film. So could you tell us a little bit what the movie's about, then? It's about, without saying too much, oh no, it's um, about a boy named Desmond who has um, been sexually assaulted by his sister's boyfriend, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And he kind of just goes through that inner struggle of, you know, feeling ashamed and, you know, going through that, what do I do, who do I tell, I can't tell anybody who's going to believe me. And um, it's really just a movie about realizing that, you know, being silent isn't, you know, is not going to save you. Being able to use your voice and to be able to, you know, s tell someone that something has happened, that's where strength comes from. And that's really, you know, the whole point of the film is that no matter what situation, mm -hmm. even if it's sexual assault or not sexual assault, that strength really does come from using your voice. So is that the message that you want people to take out of your movie? Definitely. Or I even that I wanted people to know that there was resources for mm -hmm. any kind of situation, that there is always going to be someone to talk to, whether it be a teacher or a friend or a counselor. And what happened to the movie after it was done? Was it distributed? It was distributed, but it didn't really um, kind of. They waited until the premiere happened in New York City okay. when I flew out this year. Wow. And then they also uh, put it online mm -hmm. with the lesson plan. So if you want to be, a, a, as a teacher, if you want mm -hmm. to teach the curriculum next year, you get the, like, the films mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of lesson plans. So all you have to really do is go on the website and it's right there. And do you know if it's been used in schools or how many schools have used it? Um, so far, the, uh, it'll start next okay. school year. Great. Um, so what would you say was the biggest challenge? About I really, really wanted it to seem real because I didn't want it to be some fluffy, puffy kind of, you know, in the end all evil will be destroyed. I wanted it to be realistic because I wanted not to make people feel necessarily, you know, comforted. I wanted them to feel like this is what really happens. Then again, what were the biggest joys that you took out of the movie? Oh, gosh. Um, it was just really... Like, it's like the best moment I've ever had in my life, just talking about what's happening in Hollywood, what's happening at home, what's happening at church. You know, mm -hmm. I was learning so much about this director, and I, it was just, I don't know, there was just something so special about that moment of watching my mom talk to a Hollywood director. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just, it just gave me a great pride in myself. Since you mentioned Karen Kusama, could you talk a little bit more about your relationship with her during the movie shop? Oh gosh, she was wonderful. I was really nervous to meet her because I didn't know, you know, Hollywood. You know, what mm -hmm. you, anything could come out of Hollywood. But she was really, um, really like someone who pushed me towards going better. What advice would you give to other people, other young people who might be interested in writing? Don't be afraid to write it. I know when I wrote Speechless, I was really scared to even submit it because I thought, you know, this is never going to... No one's going to want to read that. No one's going to hear about this. But, you know, you never know. A rejection, I, I was once told that a writer will get a million and one rejections. But when you get that one acceptance, it's going to take you somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the more rejection you get, honestly, the better writer you become because you have to challenge yourself to figure out, you know, what can I tweak? What can I make better about it? What can I, can I make this sentence longer? Can I make this shorter? Should I take this paragraph out? So don't be afraid to write something down and put it out there. And don't be afraid of criticism either. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard. Criticism really does suck sometimes, but mm -hmm. it really does help you. Okay. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. It was a great interview. Thank you so much for wanting to talk to me. <laughs>